All right. So 1978 Southern 500. Uh, you get in a pretty bad accident with Grant Adcox. Yeah. Um, what do you remember about the accident itself? Because it was a pretty substantial, serious a, accident. I mean, I, I got I got killed and lived through it. I remember that that they did stuff on the. I don't remember it, but my my people were there and they had me on the ground outside the car trying to get me some pulse going and and I know that and it was a bad deal. They were, what I remember about it is is I was doing good. good. I was doing I was not a lap down yet. I don't remember what, when it happened on the racetrack. David Pearson was behind me and I'm seeing him coming and I see Grant started to spin and you know it's real narrow. Always been, still is. But he went up the track backwards, and I thought, and I'm almost on him right then. And I said, I'm just going to go below. I can get, I can get between him. David's coming. I don't want to, I don't want him to pass me. And I, and he came right back down. Grant came right back down the thing, and I popped him, nearly full speed. Yeah. And in the in the video, you can see it on the video if you if you got one of those from '78. I've seen it. You know, it just was a sudden stop. Yeah. And it got my attention. <laughs> but that's what I remember about it happening. But I remember waking up in the in the hospital, and Grant was in there with me, and he looked just the opposite of me. I had bruises all the way down the right side of me, my right leg, um, body everywhere on my everywhere was my right side, and everything on his left side was was yeah, really? we were looked like the opposite twins in there, <laughs> and went um, um, we all survived it. You talked about getting some attention. Um, from that point, how did you find out about what NASCAR had found on the car? They discovered a nitrous oxide bottle. How did you find out that they had found something? Bill Gasway called me in the hospital. In the hospital. And that was probably two days later. And if you remember Bill, Bill Gasway, he was like, uh, he wanted to be like Billy France. I mean, he was he was very uh, in charge. And, and when he said it, it was cast in stone and he just called me up and he said uh, that that the car had been broken half in front and the, so the line was showing and we had to dig into it and find it we found a nitrous bottle and we're going to give you a little vacation it was a five thousand dollar penalty and i was out for the rest of the year that was in september um, that was a big hit to me how long had the bottle been there because from what i again what i read you said that it wasn't hooked up, that it had been in the car for quite some time. I might have was... said that, but, but it was hooked up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, and, and we, I put it in, in a, in the, um, in the frame rail and then left it where you turn it on. I made it where it looked like the bolt, the head bolt, like a, a three quarter, uh, head bolt. And, and that's all you saw in it was was down by the frame, and it was right where there was another bolt going somewhere, you know. And all you got to do is put the wrench on it, and turn it to turn it on, and we could do that. It was only good for qualifying, you know. It really wasn't doing anything to for performance during the race, but you know, you just turn the bolt the other way and go race and to see it later. And it had a line that went um, up into the. This was down at the frame rail, and it came up by the radiator around the loop that was around the front of it. Back down roll bar over here and, and <laughs> sprayed right into the into the air cleaner. Wow! And when you and there was a solenoid that I could hit in the car with a regular switch where it said the alternator. You know, I could flip that switch, and you get about uh, maybe thirty seconds of of nitrous oxide straight in the motor. And I, for example, at Rockingham, I wasn't going to make the race. It's the second day qualifying. I said I'm gonna I'm gonna blow the nitrous oxide, and I go around and take the green, and take the one and two, and then as soon as I could do it, I hit it on the back stretch, and a car goes way out like this here, you know, and, and <laughs> you know, hang on, I'm not letting up, you know, and I, I just went like that and got all the way down into three and four and got fast time of the day. <laughs> that's all it was for. I, I'm not trying to cheat anybody. I just need to get in a race, you know. Yeah. And and that's I, I didn't have the horsepower, and so you had to um, you had to get some. <laughs> so you were basically just trying to get to where the front runners were. At I just the want time. to get in the race or okay. anything, yeah. you know. And and sometimes um, I mean we did all kinds of things. I I, I made tires. Uh, I made tires by taking the taking the right side tires, 
and left side. I take the left side tires and grind the number off of it. And they're about that big, like that, as to say whatever it was on it. And then you take the um, well, you take the left side tires and 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 it, you take the right side tires and make up put bondo on that thing. And then when you pull the bondo off, you have like a um, uh, what do you call it? What, what, an imprint. Yeah. Imprint. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you take that and then you take the left side tires and get the number, number and put black silicone in where that was. And you put this bond back on <laughs> it and then it let it dry and take it off. And now the left side tires have the right side number on them. And so when you go to qualify, you could just put them right over there. And I'll tell you how, how much I did that is that Harry Hyde had the shop next to me over at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And whatever year it was that Lenny Pond drove for him, they won the, um, at the time they had like a challenge where the guy that won the most pole positions won something. I don't know what it was they did, but they, they won it with my tires. <laughs> wow. Harry Hyde made a deal with me. And I made a deal with him, and, <laughs> and we got real tires from him. If I make a set of tires for him so that he could win the pole, and then during the race they'd shoot tires to me so that we could we had something to run. That's that's a little deal. We made no money, just yeah, uh, just helping each other out. That's yeah. it. That's it. And, and uh, uh, getting competitive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have we have nitrous, we have tires. Surely there was an. A wealth of other things that you that that were going on at that time. Oh yeah, there was, but you know the the, uh, the inspection, inspections weren't anything like they are right. today. Right, well, they got everything today. You're not going to get away with anything. But I took in my, in my car. I want to be able to uh, seal it off in the front where they allow that now. I mean, you're, they can put tape all over everything and then do an erase. They didn't allow you to block it off in the front. So I took a uh, uh, like a, a thing you have on your uh, in, in your house that you open and close it, and, it's, it's, and they go like this here, and they, and they go like that. Okay, I don't know what that's called, uh, but a regulator that you have somewhere in your house. And I took two of those, put them together, put them behind the grill that you could, I could move it with a cable, and I could open it or close it however I wanted to, you know. And, and, wow. And so we were blocked off when we qualified. Nobody else, I don't know how many other guys had something going on like that, but, but it was hidden where you couldn't see it. You could see it easily if you're going to take it apart and look at it, but, but it was, you know, it was clear in the front. You look in there, it looks good, and, and that's all they ever did, you know. And then, so I go out, and I could block off when others couldn't. We did that really to get in the race. It was not, not something you use all day, you know, it's just something you would use in the race to get in it. And they're not in the race, and they're qualifying to get in there. Yeah. to make it in the race however you could and we did everything from uh, soaking the tires you know I ran them all the time I ran the wrong tires on the car just to get in the race but then one if you get in the top 10 they, they confiscate your tires they wouldn't do anything with them they just throw them in a pile over there but you had to start on those the way it was in that day so you really didn't want to finish, qualify in the top 10 <laughs> But you need to be in the top 20. <laughs> <laughs> and so you do whatever you got to do. I mean, that's what we did. All of us did that. All of us independents. We were a, uh, we were a camaraderie. We were, we were all in this together, you know. And whatever we could do to get in the race, we did. And I, I remember another time that, that um, junior, Junior's crew worked with me a lot at that. And we just trading off and doing – I'd do favors for him on a racetrack or whatever. And then and – then, uh, I needed a motor to qualify at Daytona. I did not have enough power to get in the race. I just simply didn't. And I asked, uh, they qualified, and I think they, they were in the top two on the first day. You remember, in those days, you would qualify Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then the qualifying race on Thursday, but you, you'd qualify four times. And so you had a lot of different, you know, had time to work on everything, try to get it well and all that. And I made a deal with, um, uh, I'm not going to say it was Tim Brewer, but it was somebody. <laughs> I'm not going to mention any names, Tim Brower. <laughs> He'll remember it. <laughs> and uh, uh, and they had another guy there that was doing tires, and and I don't know, I, don't, I haven't heard from him in a long time. His name was Shorty. That he was the tire guy with Junior. But to get in this race, they wanted three thousand dollars to use that motor. And I said, that's once they they took it right out after they qualified. And it was just sitting there. And they're going to go in a truck and go up to North Wilkesboro. But they put it in my truck, and 
made a deal, and I told him I got to have it for all four sessions in case I don't make it. I got to be able to have it for that, and they agreed to do it. But what I did with that is um, uh, on the first day on Monday, I gave it to J.D. McDuffie, and we put it in his car, and he went out and got in a race. Right? <laughs> and I, I charged him fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> And the second day, <laughs> anyway, anyway, I got uh, I got another independent. It was uh, um, Herring Burl Bailey. <laughs> okay, we put it in his car, and he got in a race. And the third day, I put it in my car, and so I got uh, fifteen hundred dollars each from them, and I got the whole three thousand dollars, and I got to use the motor for free. And I, <laughs> I give that three thousand dollars over to whoever that was that let me have the engine over at Junior's. And again, all of us got in a race, the whole three of us, and none of us belonged in it. <laughs> I'm going to hire you as the St. Vault Podcast business manager. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Let me tell you some stuff here. I mean, you know, you're working in a closet here right now. <laughs> not, very, not very big, but, but it looks good. It's great. And I got all these suits behind me here that, that uh, several of them are drivers that I've had uh, that uh, over the years. And it's really a neat little place. <laughs> so I can fix it where you'll have, like, the Taj Mahal to do your show from. In no time. <laughs> you heard it here. We know, how, we know how to do those things. <laughs> I believe that's what's called a verbal contract. All I know, right. I know those. <laughs> so getting back to Darlington. Yeah. You were suspended for 12 races. The rest of this year. I don't know what the number was. Yeah, yeah. I know it was five grand because I had to come up with that. You know. What was your reaction to that? I married Carolyn Rudd. Okay. Right then. <laughs> I said, I'm going to be off for 12 weeks. Uh, after I got well in the hospital, uh, I, said, I said, I'm just going to marry Carolyn Rudd and uh, have some fun the rest of the year. <laughs> Went to Vegas. You know. <laughs> okay. All right. And, and then I got ready for Riverside, what was going to be the next race I could run. And I think you'll find that I qualified in the top 10 when I went back on that. Maybe 11th. It was somewhere right about then in 19... 19- 79, no, yeah, I think 79, somewhere like that. I was real proud of that. With everything that was going on, you talked about the stuff with Junior's crew and the engine that you got all the independent drivers in with, with the tires, you know, having the wrong numbers on them and everything. How aware was NASCAR of all that was going on? And was it, was it basically like a cat and mouse game? Or did they let some things slide by to help you guys out? I, I don't know of them ever helping me. All right. That's a, <laughs> yeah. Okay. After that, I mean, there was another deal that we did long back. I tell you about that sometime if you want to. That just made me a kind of an outlaw, and and I did my own thing. Uh, and and NASCAR, as far as I know, they were trying to do whatever they did. I think Gary um, was what's his name, Gary from California. That, Nelson? Uh, yeah, Gary Nelson was running the show, I think, at that time, and Dick Beatty. And, you know, they just didn't have the... Uh, they, they would kind of turn their head a little bit, you know, on some things. And uh, I remember, for example, I would bring a, a really... I'd pick up some girl from the night before, get her a pit pass, and then when we went through inspection to do the, you know, where you put the... the what are, they'd, the templates, put the template over here and template over there. I had my nose fixed up where it would go faster, and this was at Daytona. And when you put that thing on there, you could stick your hand in between it. You know? So, and and the, the guys doing that, I told them, you pay attention tomorrow when you check my car out. You know, and I had this beauty, big tit, big tits, <laughs> not many clothes on. You know, man, what, yeah. whatever you can get by with. Yeah. You know, come over and look at all of them, and when they're doing that, they're trying to put the template on, you know, and they didn't pay any attention to it. They'd rather, <laughs> they'd rather see the show. <laughs> but little okay. things like that you yeah. could do, yeah. you know, and, and the NASCAR itself, I don't think knew anything about that, but it's the guys that worked in those positions, you know, you could you could get them to turn their head once in a while, and, and, and I, don't, I don't think I ever did it to beat anybody. I always did it to get in the race just to get myself in the race because I never belonged there anyway. I didn't have the right equipment. I didn't have, you know, I didn't grow up in racing. Like, I mean, I was 29 or 28 years old when I started, you know. I mean, there are guys retiring at that age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
So it's, it's, that's all that's all I did. I was in the, once I get in a race, um, I used the right tires. I, I had everything pretty well the way it was. I mean, we, we and in fact, we had to in order to survive in the races. I had an engine that I built. Uh, you know, then we could change engines. We could do a lot of things in those days. But I had an engine that I built with low compression uh, and just not the on the edge NASCAR engine. It was a we called it the all day unit. <laughs> we call it, okay. you put that in, you can run all day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and if you're going to be a little bit off, but some of these tracks you could do better with an engine that was a little off. You could, you could, you know, during the race when the track gets slick or whatever it is, you know, I could hit the floor with my my engine. And I'm not going to spin the tires. And the other guys are out there, you know, going fast and trying to make the big own, big motor get through the corner better. I just go in there and stand on it, and I get right through the corner. Now, when they got on a straightaway, they go right back by me. But I could keep up with them that way anyway. I could, yeah. I could, I could do better at keeping up by using that. But we used that engine in, uh, I'm going to say, 1976. We, we used that engine in all the races, same engine. When it came time to race, same we had a qualifying wow. engine, and we had the all-day unit, and that's where we get get to be on Saturday. There we get qualified in the race, and I tell the boys, "Go get the all-day unit, <laughs> bear down here, and then yeah. we change gears. We we drop the gear ratio one not one number, and then um, put the all-day unit in, and, and we're gonna go all day if you don't hit something." <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you you said that the uh, drivers group that you helped organize. Mm-hmm kind of put you on the on on the back track with nascar shit list that, well okay <laughs> you said it uh then you said that there was something else that happened that that really got you blacklisted well uh that was earlier than than that deal there but but when we went to our first race and it was in columbia south carolina we were trying to get to atlanta didn't make it and we we're working our way into you know we, we had all a whole nother story you know i'll write up that i'll put that in my book one day but Gasway, uh, I, I qualified 31st, and they only took 30 cars. All right? So the, I got the rule book out. What you do is you get in your car, and you start the motor up, and if for any reason one of the other competitors does, can't get going, then you go in. You're the alternate. You're the first alternate. That's the way it worked at that time. And I went down, and I was 31st, and that was it. I got out there sitting in my car, and Earl Brooks couldn't get started. You had to start under your own power too. You know, you couldn't get a couldn't get a push to get started. You had to you had to um, get, figure out how to get jumped or what you had to do to get started. And didn't go, didn't go, didn't go. And then and then all the rest of the guys were already gone. So I hauled ass. I just said I'm in the race. And I got over there and I got in the back of the race or back of the lineup. Came around the next time and they got the black flag out for me. And Earl Brooks still sitting on Pitt Road. Okay. <laughs> I go around the next time and took it the second time. You know, I, I wanted to make sure they were showing it to me and, and, and I didn't have radios or anything. And so I went back in. And my, my brother, Ken, that was, uh, that was, had been with me all uh, to, to start with the first three or four or five years that I, he was with me all the way. And Ken uh, was pissed off. He was, you know, he, he said, I'm going to show you know, the effing Gasway, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he goes down there with the with the rule book, and Gasway's trying to run the race. He's got the earphones on and everything, you know, and he's trying to show him in a rule book what's supposed to happen. Her book's still sitting on, still sitting there. All right, and I'm still in my car, but my brother went down there, and he he got pretty belligerent. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, graphic <laughs> with, with Gasway, <laughs> all right, with Gasway, and then. And Gasaway turned to do something what he was doing, and he he, he took his headset and pulled it apart and let it go. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "Listen to me." <laughs> and Gasaway just he said, "I'll deal with you later," you know. And he went on doing it anyway. They dealt with me there, and it was that was my first race. Kid from California did everything wrong, and uh, and that put me on the shit list to begin with. <laughs> and I just continued to be on that list until they underlined it when I did that driver's thing, when I organized the drivers. You know, Richard was right in there, too. Richard Petty was right in there with us and right in the meeting and, and said, said it's got to be better for you guys. You know, you need to be here. And you got to remember in that time, um, Rick, that the, that there were 
maybe maybe 12 factory cars more than likely eight at most of the races but you know some of the guys didn't race every week or didn't race in every race and the rest were all independents there, there ain't gonna in that period of time I think not just because I'm an independent but I don't know what would have happened to the NASCAR I don't know how they would have dealt with that if there weren't any, if there weren't any cars right. if there weren't any independents yeah. Yeah. you know there, there'd be like six guys out there going for the race or ten or whatever it is and, and they'd all be a line, line they'd be all fast but but they had no way to pass <laughs> and and I think it was a uh, even even later in in uh, in life after I retired and after a lot of things happened when the Hall of Fame started up here I thought they should have a a uh, a plaque or a yeah. uh, something that that recognized the independent drivers as a whole not me but just everybody that was an independent because we really made the show for for all yeah. we we're the ones that wrecked we're the ones that got killed you know it's just. Um, we were there for that period of time, and then it grew to a point where they didn't need to be, where there was no more independence. Uh, you had to have some sponsorship in order to keep going. 